On today's exciting episode of Undercover Boss, we will follow two bosses as they go undercover and discover employees that use illegal drugs at work. I'm, I'm just straight up lazy, man. Yeah. Like, smoke weed, I'll drink, you know, come in, smoke a bowl before work just to like calm down. How will this shocking revelation affect the bosses and how will they deal with the employees? Tune in to find out on today's episode of Undercover Boss. We will first follow the CEO of O'Neill's Clothing, Toby Boast. My name is Toby Boast and I'm CEO of O'Neill Clothing USA. Headquartered in Irvine, California, O'Neill Clothing is one of the world's largest surfwear and youth lifestyle brands. The company was founded 60 years ago and they specialize in sport apparels and accessories. This has made them very successful, and they have a revenue of $200 million a year. Toby grew up in Northern California, and he always thought that he would be following in his father's footsteps and become a doctor, but in his teenage years, he fell in love with action sports, and he decided to get a degree in business. Toby then started working in multiple sport companies so he could gain more experience and grow his resume. And he finally got an upper management position, and after only working for a few years, he got the CEO job. Toby believes that the workspace should be fun, so since he became CEO, he's installed an indoor skating area and a pet arena. Since Toby joined the company, O'Neill has been growing really fast, but Toby thinks that there are still ways to improve, and the only way to see which things to improve are to go undercover and see what things need to be corrected. He'll be going undercover as Frederick, and his employees will be told that he's a contestant on a reality show, competing to win money so he can open his own shop. For his first job, we see him traveling to Las Vegas, Nevada to work with a seasonal sales associate. I'm here in Las Vegas today at O'Neill's outlet store. I'm going to be working with a seasonal sales associate. He meets up with Jesus and he first takes him to the tour of the store and tells him about the products. Seasonal workers are only hired on busy times of the year, so they're not really trained well and it shows here as Jesus didn't really know a lot about the products that they have on sale. This was one of Toby's fears and one of the main things that's holding the company back from growing even faster. Protection from the elements. There it is, man. You need to know exactly what these products are all about. It's what we do. We then see Jesus giving the cleaning job to Toby, and he walks away just to talk to his friends, ignoring both Toby and the incoming customers. Toby's annoyed by Jesus, but he doesn't want to blow his cover, so he just does his task. Later, the two get to talk, and Jesus reveals that he doesn't like O'Neill because it's such a douche brand. He says that people that wear those kinds of clothes are douches, so he doesn't really like to be associated with them. You would never see me wearing an O'Neill shirt. He hates the clothes. That's not a good fit for any retail store. We then see Toby getting angry, but things get even worse when Jesus reveals that he smokes weed at work and offers to bring him one. Sorry, what was that? I know how to grow some really good weed if, you, uh, <laughs> if you're really interested. Jesus is very passionate about weed and he even advises Toby to open a weed shop instead of the store if he wins the competition. Toby's shocked by all that he's hearing, but he still didn't want to blow his cover, so he just changes the subject and they talk about their families. The next day, Toby travels to Compton, California to work in the printing factory and he meets up with Jorge and he first shows him how to put a printer on a shirt. While working together, Toby learns that the designs sent from corporate are usually not clear with their instructions on the placement of the prints, so Jorge just guesses and prints it on the place that he thinks is the best. And this is yet another problem within the company that Toby is noticing and he plans to send designers to the factory to fix the issue. I'm definitely going to have my designers down here more often working with Jorge because our brand's hands are in Jorge's hands. Toby next takes over the printing machine to do a print by himself and he does okay for a first timer but he does mess up on some of them completely so we see Jorge redoing them again. On their break, Toby learns that Jorge has a younger daughter with a rare disease that requires extensive medical procedures just to keep her alive and Jorge has been struggling to support his whole family financially. For his next job, Toby travels to Anaheim, California to work as assistant manager of retail. I'm here today in Anaheim, California at O'Neill's flagship store. 
I'm going to be working with the assistant manager of retail. He meets up with Desire, and she first teaches him how to set up and present the merchandise to appeal to customers. Desire is very creative and comes up with her own marketing ideas to enable her to sell products easily. Toby really likes this, and he also sees that she loves her job and works really hard. They next work on sales, and Desire again is really good at her job, but Toby was very uncharismatic, and he struggles to even sell one product. Frederick did not sell the backpack. So when it comes to Frederick owning his own store today, probably not. On their break, Toby learns that Desire is a single mom and that she works very hard so her daughter can have a better life than she did. For his last job, he travels to Commerce, California to work in the stock room. And I'm at the Citadel Outlet Malls in Commerce, California. I'm gonna be working in the stock room today and he meets up with Michael, and he first shows him how to scan the inventory and stock them. While doing the job, Toby sees the scanning devices in the computer systems are really outdated and it's wasting a lot of time and energy for the employees. And this is another thing that's holding the company back, and he plans to fix it as well. Point of sale system needs an upgrade. It's all right. I'm gonna take responsibility and put the pressure on myself to make it run right. Later, Toby learns that Michael's family got into a major financial issue when he was in high school and that they were homeless for a period of time after that. Michael always wanted to go to college, but since he had to help out his family, he got right into the workforce and put his dreams aside. And finally, we see Toby's undercover time coming to an end, and he invites his employees to reveal his true identity. First in was Jesus, and Toby starts the conversation by asking him if he really thought that O'Neill's clothing are for douches. And we see Jesus here immediately answering by saying yes. Toby then confronts him about his weed smoking, and tells him that he's a liability for the company, and Jesus doesn't really have any defense and waits to be fired, but Toby goes on to tell him that he was also reckless and irresponsible when he was his age, so he wants to give him another chance and help him change. Toby then offers to mentor him personally and train him, which Jesus accepts, and thanks Toby for giving him a second chance. Now, I've never had that father like advice, like I've, I've learned everything by myself, so I look up to him as a mentor. Next in was Michael. And Toby tells him that he was impressed by his hard work, and tells him that the computer system will be upgraded in every store, and he then gives him $10,000 to help with his family's financial issue, and another $40,000 so he can go to college and follow his dreams. You know, it's like somebody like really cares, you know, just, I, I felt like that, that's what was given to me today. Next in was Desire, and he tells her that he loved her marketing ideas and reveals to her that her store will be getting a $50,000 bonus, and then offers to send her and her daughter to a fully paid vacation, and on top of that, he gives her $20,000 to spend on whatever she likes. With a $20,000 bonus. Oh my god. To really help you with your financial needs. Last in was Jorge, and he tells him that he loved his work ethic, and gives him a raise so he wouldn't worry about supporting his family, and then gives him an additional $40,000 so his daughter can get the treatment that she needs. That gives me the opportunity to do more for the family, and that's what I wake up every morning and go to work. Let us now follow our next boss, the chairwoman and owner of Donato's Pizza, Jane Abel. I'm Jane Gertie Abel, and I'm the chairwoman of Donato's. Headquartered in Columbus, Ohio, Donito's is one of the fastest growing pizza chains in the country, grossing over $170 million and employing over 5,000 people. Donito's is a family business that was started by Jane's father 50 years ago. Jane learned the business since she was young and finally took over after college. Since Jane joined, the company has been steadily growing, but Jane still sees that there's a potential for more, so she wants to go undercover and find things that need to be improved. Jane will be going undercover as Kathy, a contestant competing to open up her own restaurant. For her first job, Jane travels to Ohio State University to work in their campus location, and she meets up with delivery driver Aaron, who's immediately attracted to her, and Aaron thinks that Jane is cute, and he wanted to impress her while they work. But in the background, there's a problem brewing, as the chain manager suspects that Jane might not be the person that she said that she was. The manager kept staring at her and figures out who she is, and then starts telling other employees that Jane might be on undercover boss. 
Jay notices the murmur, and she fears that she might be discovered, but good thing for her, Aaron had not heard anything, so before everything blows in her face, she decides to talk to the manager, and she reveals her true identity, and makes her promise that she wouldn't tell anyone else. She then goes on the road with Aaron, and drives to the first customer home, and Aaron was very good with his job, and he's actually a safe driver, and he's also very polite with customers, which Jane really appreciates. Jane then delivers the next pizza, and her encounter with the customers was not as great as Aaron's, as it's been almost 30 years since she did delivery. On their drive back, the two get to talking, in an attempt to impress Jane, Aaron reveals that he sometimes smokes weed during work. He elaborates by saying since most of his work is delivering to dorms when college kids offer him weed, he usually takes it. This is shocking news to Jane, who up to now was praising Aaron for his work. She notes that this is not just an illegal thing to do, but also very unsafe, since he also operates his car while he's high. Not only is it just not safe, it's illegal. I want to take off my disguise and fire him right there. Jane is very mad, but she didn't want to blow his cover, but she still confronts Aaron about smoking while working, but he tells her that it's not a big deal. Aaron doesn't want to get fired though, so he asks her not to tell his boss, not knowing that she's actually the one who's in charge. Well, I don't tell my bosses that I do that, and you can't tell do my you, bosses that do I do Do you think your, if your bosses know, they would fire you? The next morning, Jane travels to Virginia to work as an assistant manager. Today I'm in Vienna, Virginia, and I'm going to be working as an assistant manager. She meets up with Buffy, and we see them getting right to work. Buffy first shows Jane how to prepare a pizza, and Jane has been making pizza her whole life, so this shouldn't be the easiest job for her, but when the lunch rush comes, she struggles to keep up with the orders. But as more orders started coming in, I did get flustered. Kathy, you got a pizza coming out to be cut? On their break, Jane learns that Buffy used to be a general manager in a good hotel, and the hotel also hosts birthday parties for extra money, and one night on a birthday job, Buffy puts her assistant to overlook the party. But that night, a tragedy happens as her assistant was shot and killed by a mass shooter. After the tragic day, Buffy felt extremely guilty for leaving her assistant dying and she couldn't continue doing her job, so she resigned from that position and she didn't have a job for some time. She lived in a rent at home which doesn't even have a bed, and she also recently lost custody of her kids since she wasn't able to properly provide for them, and she's now trying to pick herself up, and now is a manager in Donito's, but she still hasn't been able to get her kids back. Jane is incredibly saddened by the story, and she plans to help her out. For her next job, Jane travels to Ohio to work as a cashier. Today I'm back in Columbus, Ohio, and I'm going to be working as a cashier. She meets up with Kanisha, and she shows her how to operate the cash register, and Jane tries to do it multiple times, but she struggles, as she was too slow, and she also makes multiple mistakes. Oh, you're fine. She asked me for help a few times, but other than that, she kind of like found her way through the menu, and she fought through the rush. At lunchtime, the line kept growing longer, but as the time went, Jane kept getting better and she was able to complete the lunch rush orders on her own. For her final job, Jane stays at Columbus to work at the pickup window. Today I'm on the west side of Columbus and I'm going to be working as an associate at our pickup window. And she meets up with Tanji and she instructs her on how to work at the window. Tanji was not the greatest teacher, but she was still young and a very hard worker, so Jane sees a bright future for her. Tanji interacts with the guests very well. She opens the window immediately. She checks the orders and makes sure it's right. And while working together, Jane learns that Tanji has been working since she was 16 to help out her mom financially, and that her dream is to go into medicine, which she currently can't afford to attend. And finally, Jane's undercover time comes to an end, and she invites her employees to reveal her true identity. I'm the chairwoman and owner of Donatus. Oh, wow, hi. Uh, and I was Kathy. Oh, man, you were. First in was Aaron, and Jane confronts him about his smoking habits, and Aaron tries to deny that he ever smoked weed, but this really doesn't go well for him as it just annoys Jane more, and she tells him that he's been fired from his delivery job, but she still wanted to give him a second chance, so she tells him that if he can pass a drug test in 30 days, he can get his job back. I thank her for giving me the chance that she's giving me, and um, I think in the long run, I'm going to show her how much I appreciate it. 
Next in was Buffy, and Jane immediately offers her the general manager position, and on top of that, she gives her $40,000 so she can live in a better home and raise her children well. And she then goes on to give her $30,000 just for her. And everything that I, uh, that I stay up nights worrying about are just gone. I feel like this is really going to be the beginning of something fantastic. Next in was Tanji, and Jane tells her that she was a good employee and offers to pay her bills for a year, and on top of that, she gives her $10,000 so she can start college. I didn't think I would ever have anything like this ever happen to me. It feels great. It Last in was Kanisha, and Jane was also impressed with her, so she gives her $50,000 for her college tuition, and whatever was left will be used to do with as she pleases. I feel like I can really focus on school and keep striving to make my dream come true. This won't just affect me today or affect me or it affects my rest of my life.